Hey, this is Sister Modupoy. Sister Modupoy's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show, where we teach, share, learn about being nutritionally optimized from your chakras, all from your head to your toe. What that means is we're talking about your whole everything, right? Your spiritual, emotional, physical, what you eat, everything, okay? 360 degrees. Remember, you're not that physical body that you wear. Your spirit's so light, and we want to talk about taking care of all of it, all right? So hold on. I know you're saying, what is slipping into darkness? What can that be about today, right? Okay, stop what you're doing because this is so important. I want you to listen and understand, right? We're going to talk about fats and oils and such, right? Fats and oils, slippery, you know, hey, ha, ha. <laughs> But it's so important because it's it absolutely essential that you get good fats into your body, eat those, consume those every day, right? So I'm going to talk about canola oil, right? You hear everybody, the doctors, everybody talking about doing canola oil. Well, have you inve investigated what canola oil is? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Have you thought? Have you seen a canola growing? <laughs> all right, so we all like that fatty, rich taste of foods in our mouth and such, but we want to make sure we're consuming good fats and then we understand the source of the foods we put in, the, how they're produced, how they're processed or whatever, and what the effect on our body is, right? Because I said it, fats are essential. So let's start talking a little bit about our main guest, let's call it today, canola oil. So I have a little entry I want you to look through as I kind of read through with you on it. And this is from a book I really, really like called Conquering Any Disease. Conquering Any Disease, the Ultimate High Phytochemical Food Healing System. These guys have done a really great job on the information they cover. Now, you see the entry above? It talks about canola oil. You see what it says right after that? AKA, also known as rapeseed oil. Rapeseed oil. Uh, does that sound like something you might want to be eating? Rapeseed oil, right? Names usually have some association to what it does in the body or, or whatever, you know, when it comes to a food or something. So let's, let's look through this. It says, contrary to popular belief, canola oil is in no way related to corn. First of all, let's get that straight. And it's genetically engineered rapeseed oil. Now, originally, when they produced this particular oil, it, was, um, it wasn't done genetically modifying it, but now it is genetically modified. I read somewhere it was at, like at least 90% or so of the rapeseed oil on the market, or the canola oil, I'm sorry, is, has been genetically modified. So already we're going like, oh, Stop, right? We know I, at least I don't want any genetically modified stuff. The word rape is exactly what it does to your body. That's why I love this book. They're not playing. It's that's exactly what it does to your body. Unfortunately, most people are unaware, are unaware of the toxic canola oil, of how toxic canola oil is. And therefore, it's in many health foods, food stores. Did you see that? In the same sentence they talked about how toxic it is. But it's in health food stores. So if you don't do some research, people, come on, you got to research. This is your health. And that means that you need to understand, because it's a brand new day out here. You hear me? It's a brave new world. And you just can't pick up anything and expect that it was grown properly and all of that. It was processed properly for your health. Because, hey, what they say, follow the money, right? So. It is very inexpensive to grow. See what I say about follow the money. That's why you see it in all the products on the shelves. Even the big uh, uh, so-called health food stores, natural food stores. You look, you pick up an energy bar, you want to pick up something, and it's got canola oil in it. I'm like, uh, uh, I went to a, uh, somewhere the other day and got a salad, a prepared salad from a delicatessen counter at a, at a really nice, uh, healthy kind of store. And I didn't look at the ingredients, right? Because it, I knew it had kale and, and maybe some almonds, something, something like that in it, right? 
After I finish it, I look at the label and I'm like, canola oil. I'm like, uh-uh, I don't do canola oil. So they slipped that one in on me, but that won't happen again. <laughs> okay, so it's very inexpensive to grow because insects won't eat it. Did you hear me? That should be making you go, hmm, if an insect won't eat it, what does that mean? Maybe it means that it's not really like food, <laughs> okay? So it is derived from the mustard seed family, from the mustard family, and it is a poisonous weed, which after processing becomes rancid very quickly. That means it, it goes bad. You know how you slice an apple and, and it starts turning brown? Who wants to eat an apple? Let's just say your apple sat out for a day, sliced open, and now it's really brown, right? Does that look like something you want to eat, right? You know, the flavor's off. And you know, something's happened to its freshness. So it's not going to offer to your body what you, why you originally be um, interested in eating the apple, okay? The same thing happens with oils, whether it's from a sesame seed or an olive or corn or whatever the source of the oil, once the air starts hitting it, it starts to go rancid. And some oil, some uh, oil substances like that are much more susceptible to going rancid, essentially almost like, like rotten, stale, not good for you, than other oils. So for example, sesame seed oil. You always, it's very hard to find sesame seed oil on the shelf that's not toasted. And they heat it, essentially almost like lightly burning it, so that it will have a longer shelf life. But if it's an untoasted sesame oil, it is very, very, they, they produce very little of it because it has such a short shelf life before it goes bad, right? So that's just an example. Canola is another one. This stuff is so, I'm going to talk to you about the, you won't believe the processing. They have to take this thing through. When, once they squeeze that oil out of that canola, genetically modified, produced thing. At, do you even know what canola stands for? Hmm? It stands, it's a combination of Canada and the word oil. Canola. Okay? And they've named it this. They had to come up with a name because they didn't think rapeseed would be very, uh, work very well, right? Okay, so canola oil, going back to our, 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 um, our part out of this book, canola oil is the single most toxic of all plant oils. Why is everybody consuming it if it's so toxic? Toxic of all the plant oils. Let's see, there's a lot of plants out there, there's a lot of other plant oils people could choose from to make products, but remember this is the most inexpensive. Okay, it is the source of mustard gas, which blisters on contact with the skin. So this is why they're talking about it. Rape is like raping the inside of your body. Farmers love to grow it because it is itself an insecticide, preventing any bugs from coming near it. You hear me? So that's why there's so much out there. They can grow it cheaply. They can use it like an insecticide, you know, plant it around other crops. You would think they wouldn't use so many pesticides if, or insecticides if that's the case. But anyway, so since the insects won't eat it, now they got all this stuff they planted, what are they going to do with it? Well, they're going to sell it to you. That's what they're going to do. All right? Now, that's not cool, but that's what happens. So can you believe that canola oil is in so many things? That's what I was just saying. And that people have not wised up about it. Do your research. We're talking about your health, your body, your, your vitality, okay? Understand what things, where things come from, how they're processed or whatever, before you consume them. Because it's better to pay up front with your time and your resources than to pay later. Pay at the doctor, pay, pay the surgeon, pay for all that medication and pay in ways that is priceless of, again, your vitality, your energy, you're living your life to the fullest. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, canola oil is not gonna help you live your life to the fullest. When canola oil is given to rats, they develop fatty degeneration of the heart, the kidneys, the adrenals, and thyroid gland. I don't think I need to repeat that. I know your mouth dropped open, I know we are not lab rats, but guess what? If it's affecting them that way, it probably has some similar effects in humans. Huh, wait a minute. That looks like those are, that's a list of a lot of the top ailments in the, in the country. Why people are in the hospital on medications, having surgery, heart, kidneys, 
adrenals, thyroid gland. Ah. When canola oil was withdrawn from the rats, when they no longer gave those lab rats this canola oil, these fatty deposits went away, right? Now, it's not just that there were fatty deposits. When these fatty deposits form in like your heart and your kidney and stuff like that, they start to interrupt the f optimum functioning or maybe the functioning at all of those organs. Well, guess what? I didn't name an organ you don't need. <laughs> your kidney, your heart, your adrenals, your thyroid, etc. So in humans, it has been linked with increased incidence of heart disease and cancer. Two top things, heart disease and cancer. Read the labels and avoid it like the plague. Now you are informed canola oil is mean, bad stuff, okay? Now it's not just in this, in this book that, that they're talking about canola oil like that. Let's take a look at uh, our first link. Now, this link talks about when an oil isn't so great after all. And, and the reason that they've titled it like this is because the doctors are telling everybody to eat canola oil. Now, there looks like there might be some good substances in it. But first of all, like I say, it's genetically modified. 90% 90, 90 of the market is genetically um, uh, modified. Okay, so that's the first strike before any other possibly good things. And the profile of the oil, you know, it's got some polyunsaturated fats, which is a good thing, but not with all that comes with everything else with this oil. So it's promoted as being healthy. However, it is so highly processed. Remember, the more you process something, the more you change its nature. You change it from possibly something that starts out as something healthy into something that's not healthy. So for example, with um, uh, olive oil, you shouldn't eat olive oil. You, take, you change it from being something healthy to being something that is not healthy. So what is canola oil? Here we can see they talk about the kinds of fats, it, uh, where it was developed, like I say, in Canada. And it's, it's just now they, they've made it so that it's got the herbicides and insecticides and stuff in the seed. So now you get to eat the, the, the chemicals they were putting on, they used to put on the crop to kill it, kill the, the uh, pests that would, would consume it or bother it or something like that. And now it's just, it's not good for you at all, okay? So, but it's a, it's a common food pr uh, product, ingredient in a lot of things, a lot of things. You'll see mayo that's made totally from canola, uh, cooking oil, things like that. And it's really, really not good for you. Look. Look, plant sourced oils like canola, once they're processed, they can also be used industrially. Now, if something is so tough that it can be used in a car engine, I don't think it's something that my body should be using because we're, we're, our bodies are made to consume things that we can break down, take apart, and use, and then, you know, get rid of the excess, whether it's, it's you know, through breathing to get rid of uh, uh, what we don't use or through, uh, you know, hey, going to the restroom. But that's how our bodies are made to operate. We are not car engines. You hear me? So, listen, look at that. To formulate lubricants for cars, oils, fuels, soaps, paints, plastic, cosmetics, and ink. Come on now, canola and wheat are also used for the production of ethanol, which is a component of gasoline. Come on now, does that sound like something your body can break down? Canola seeds can also be used as biodiesel. You hear me, something that those big old semi-trucks can use. No, your body is not made to be able to use that, all right? And some show that it is uh, so full of pesticides and such again that it's it's just bad news, okay? Now you can see the composition. It's got saturated fat in it, which the body needs. It's got mono, uh, monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids. We're, we're told that we really should consume a lot of uh, fats, oils, and such that are polyunsaturated, have polyunsaturated fatty acids. But when we look at all that comes with it, no good. Let's scroll on back to look a bit at what the people say are the benefits of canola. It looks like it's all industrial benefits to me. Okay? So we're going to talk about the fact that they say that there's benefits, but we're going to talk about what alternatives there are because we don't need or want to take in this genetically modified thing that's got all these chemicals and things that, are, that come along with it. 
So how do they make canola oil, okay? So somebody could say, well, it's a plant, so it's got to have something good for you. Okay, but how do they make it? As it says here, unfortunately, the details for making these oils, you don't know anything about them unless you've done some research. I, and, and, and me, I like to search and search. I was a research librarian, so um, hey, that means checking and checking and checking because I'm talking about my health. So let's look at some of the details you're not told about by these vegetable oil producers, about canola oil's productions. Okay, it is, it is used in, um, let's go back up to where it was talking about how it's produced. Back up a little bit more. Yep. Up, up, up. There you go, right there. Uh, so it is uh, turned into, quote unquote, an edible product after they take, for example, these two substances out. Let's go back up a little bit more. That was my fault. I didn't stop in the right place. There we go, right there. Okay, so those two inedible substances are removed. So then they'll say, oh, now you can eat it, right? Okay, let's keep going. But to turn it into an edible product, look, look at what they do. They have to uh, refine it, you know, crush the seeds, bleach it, boil it, and put several other chemicals on it. <laughs> do you know they have to deodorize this stuff? It smells so bad by the time they get through processing it to make it edible. They have to deodorize it. Now, my mother, she is uh, quite the cook, and she's certainly not a vegan or a vegetarian. And so even my mother, who eats a big variety of things, she says, something's not right about that oil. It does not smell right, da 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 And that's what a lot of people who do consume canola oil, or, or uh, uh, did or were about to, right, they were thinking about using it, they'll say, oh, this doesn't smell right. They say it kind of smells industrial or fishy or something like that. And they may eat fish, but they say if this oil is not supposed to have any fish in it, why does it smell quote unquote fishy? It's got that strange smell to it, right? So like I say, they have to put this oil through so many industrial processes to make it edible. Uh, you should be saying to yourself, come on now, if you got to do all that to make it edible, it doesn't sound like it would be edible by the end of all those processes. <laughs> because what I'm talking about is a lot of heat I'm talking about a lot of chemicals, and I'm talking about no, all those chemicals are not able to be removed. I don't care what they tell you. They're not all able to be removed from canola by the time it gets to you, which is why it smells funny, right? So let's look at some of the other things that this article talks about. Ha! Ah, is it safe? Okay. Guess what? The food industry tells you it's safe, but I don't, how's it going to be safe? How's it going to be safe after doing all those things? That's why I talk about eating more raw, fresh, real foods, right? Something you haven't heated, something you're, you're not um, adding a lot of chemicals to in the sense, for example, like in your barbecue, guess what? You're, you're changing the nature of that food with that high heat and that charcoal and lighter fluid and all that, right? So the, we've done... Um, They've done studies, and they say that it is really good for you, but in a, in a Canadian research study done, canola oil had signs of vitamin E deficiency. Even if the replacement contained uh, suitable vitamin E, it can be dangerous, and it can lead to free radical damage and cardiovascular uh, issues in your health. And that's why you don't want to eat this thing, because it, it produces free radicals, it causes problems in the body. You don't want to consume something that causes body. So in another animal test they conducted, rats ended up with high blood pressure and uh, shorter lifespans when canola oil became their primary source of fat. So later uh, studies found that uh, there were compounds in the oil that caused cell membranes to become rigid, right? Uh, that does not sound like what you want to be eating, right? So side effects are that, again, it can make you sick. Uh, they hydrogenate the canola oil, which is usually a liquid when they finish. And when they hydrate it, it's to make what they call margarines. Huh? Margarines are the worst thing. Margarines chemically are related to like plastics. Mm-hmm. Again, so that's not something that is healthy for the body. You're not getting nutrition for the body, it's causing a lot of damage. So, um, so 
apart from canola oil being, uh, you know, being told to you that it's beneficial to your health, another myth is that saturated fat uh, is was actually manipulated. Oh, they're talking about a research study. I'm, uh, pardon me. So. It, canola oil is even more dangerous, as I'm saying, when, it be, when it's made into a margarine. So let's go on past this section, as I definitely want to get to, to the part to give you some alternatives. So uh, oils that are recommended, things like olive oil, things like, we're not going to look at any of those, things like olive oils, things like coconut oil. I even brought some of the things in here today to show you. So things like olive oil. Don't go buying a big jug of olive oil because every time you open and close that bottle, you're letting air in there and it is causing the oil to go rancid. It's causing it to go bad. But guess what I'm doing? I use a lot less oil, olive oil than I used to. And remember I said, never heat the olive oil, okay? I'm just eating the olives. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious with the food, just eat the olives. Then you're getting whole food, you're getting the fiber, you're getting the other nutrients that have not been lost by, uh, you know, producing the oil. Another great thing to have is coconut oil. Make sure you get non-processed cold-pressed olive oil and cold-pressed coconut oil. These are both much more stable. The coconut oil in particular, it's a saturated fat which you need. Your brain is mostly fat, okay? Your, your hormones are mostly start out from the basis of cholesterol. You need those fats not only for your skin, but for your brain function. I always tell people, think about it. A lot of times they, when they put a, an elder person into a senior home and they're feeding them these low-fat diets and stuff, what happens? All of a sudden now they're dementia, Alzheimer's, um, they can't remember anything, the brain functioning slows down so much. You've got to have these good fats. So other good fats are things like avocados, very good fat. I'd say eat an avocado a day. Things like hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are really good for you too and they have really good fat. Now again, you could go and get the oil but I say try to eat the foods as whole as possible, all right? Now, I had one more thing I wanted to talk with you about. Uh, I went to the vegan street fair in North Hollywood this past weekend, and uh, we, had a, we had a ball, because me and my husband just dance, dance, dance. The sun was shining. We were surrounded by vegan foods. I could eat a ton of stuff, but he's raw vegan, so he doesn't eat the cooked stuff. So there really wasn't stuff a lot there for him to eat. But I tasted a few things. And I picked up this thing called, uh, oh no, I'm, pardon me, I didn't get the nutrition news at that event. I, I got the nutrition news at a store, all right? But you see here, eat fat, lose weight. Am I telling you about the need to do research or what? Because they'll t have told you one, some, one thing 50 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever, they were telling everybody, go low fat, this, that, the other. And there were so many problem health problems that people were having by going low fat. When you go low fat, there are a number of things that happen because your fat need your body needs the fat. We're talking about eating good fats. Like I say, the olives, the olive oil, the coconut oil, the hemp seeds, things like walnuts because that's good fat for your body to run on. So, things that happen when you don't have the good fats in the diet you're going to have problems with your skin, your hair, your nails. You're going to have problems with being hungry all the time, low energy, foggy brain, things like that. So you want to make sure to eat good fats. And guess what? Your, your body can't metabolize your proteins and such properly. You have to have fats in order for your metabolism to stay at a good maintenance point. Otherwise, it will drop and then now you start to gain weight and you get stressed and all of that kind of thing. And without the good fats, you also um, produce a lot of fat, um, I'm sorry, cortisone, which helps you to hold on to fat instead of your body functioning very efficiently and effectively when you don't have the right fats in your diet. So am I talking about uh, soybean oil, you know, you're frying some french fries and soybean, no, that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. I'm talking about whole real foods, good sources of fat, things like sesame seeds. And again, like I say, it's better to do the whole food, the sesame seeds, and, uh, or tahini, which is what's like sesame seed butter, you know how you make peanut butter by crushing, grinding the peanuts, 
You make sesame seed butter or tahini by crushing, smashing the sesame seeds. And that's a very rich source of very good nutrients and it's also uh, good fats. So you get other nutrients and good fats and good fiber. So what this woman has done a lot of research on is about how not having good fats in the body cause a lot of problems. Let me read a little bit about her. She had, uh, her name is Anne Louise, and she had been the director of a longevity center. And this place was like the temple of fat phobia. That's not my words, that's their words. And she saw firsthand the pitfalls of fat-free eating. Now, you know, because sometimes they'll put people on talking about, oh, well, no fats for you. You're just going to eat foods with no fats because either you have um, a weight issue or something like that. Bad idea. That totally unbalances the body because essential fats are absolutely necessary for optimum functioning of the body every day. So these are some of the things that she witnessed. The inability to maintain weight loss, the constant gnawing hunger. Again, the fats help you to feel satiated. Uh, fem fe female problems, infertility, hypothyroidism, weak immunity, lack of energy, and poor condition of hair, skin, and nails. Because you need these good fats in the body, it unbalances a lot of things in systems in the body because the fat is necessary for these processes to operate okay so remember good fat is absolutely essential now if you're on a weight loss program or something then you modify the number of calories that you would take in but you do not cut out fats totally because fats are needed for the body to operate properly all right so they help to accelerate metabolism, it helps to subdue stress, and it helps ease hunger pains. Now that all sounds like something we all want to deal with because we don't want to be grabbing the wrong kinds of food to eat, uh, upsetting our moods by not having the right uh, amounts of fats in our diet, smart fats, good fats, so that we feel satiated, we feel energized, we feel alert, and we keep everything operating in a very balanced manner, okay? Like I say, don't believe what I say. Go do some research. Your body, your health is should start with you. Don't go to an office, a doctor's office or somebody and just say, well, I'm feeling like this. What pill do you have for me? Or, I'm feeling like this. Uh, what surgery do you su suggest? Because you have options. The body is a phenomenal temple. It's a phenomenal machine. Remember, because we're not this body. We are a spirit, light, soul, whatever you want to call it, and this is just our vehicle. But we've got to take care of this vehicle, right? So I can tell you a story about a man he was uh, worked with some years ago. He had a heart condition. And so they had dropped the amount of fat that he was. This is when they were thinking, you know, you need to be fat-free if you get a heart clogged up heart. But it's eating the bad fats. It's eating a ton of fried, you know, eating fried foods, eating uh, rancid oils and fats that do the body damage, okay? So good fats, again, are good and absolutely essential. But the thing was, his skin was drying up so bad, it was actually cracking. His skin was cracking because he was not consuming fats, enough fats. And so, again, thank you so much for being with me. I hope that I have put a bug in your ear or planted a seed, a good healthy type of seed. Do some research on canola. Don't just believe anything, everything people tell you about something, not even what I say. You're going to find articles out there on the internet and such where people are saying that canola is good for you. It is not. It's very hard on the body. It is full of toxins. Don't eat it. Okay, so we want to thank our sponsors for today, All in One Press Kit. Go take a look at rawvegansoulfood.com. That's my press kit, and I love it. It's got all the social media buttons on it I want. It's got video of me up there, and I can switch those videos in and out. Go to allinonepresskit.com and find out how you can get a beautiful press kit that will help serve you to reach the audience that you want to reach, whether it's for business or whatever. All right, thank you so much. I love you. Take care of yourself. This is Sister Modupoi saying, please join me next time. Peace.